international cooperation is certainly going to be the tone that's required as African ministers of energy gather in Johannesburg to discuss what needs to be done ahead of COP17, the Climate Change Summit. The road to Durban promoting sustainable energy access for Africa is a reference to COP17 that's to be held after November this year. Joining us now to discuss energy issues in the region is Munyani Muleleki, who's the Minister of Natural Resources in Lesotho. Minister, thank you so much for availing us your time. So as African ministers met to try to thrash out uh, an agenda and guidelines for COP17, what are emergent issues? What are the dominant themes? Well, uh, one issue that is emerging is the attitude of the World Bank, which is very pleasant to observe that uh, today they, they talk um, hydropower, they, they always make sure in their, in their speeches to make sure that we, we develop hydropower as one of the biggest uh, renewable energy sources, uh, something which uh, 10, 15 years ago you yeah. wouldn't have heard from the World Bank. Today uh, th th they are encouraging us, they mentioned a representative of the World Bank as an example mentioned in his presentation this morning that he sees six areas in Africa, one in Guinea, Nigeria, Cameroon, the Inga project in the Congo, one in Ethiopia, and, and the last sixth one in, in Mozambique. And he didn't mention things that we have in, in, in the sub-region, as, right. as, uh, for example, in my own country, Lesotho, but we'll come to that. Let's, let's continue on what's happening at a macro perspective, because obviously, as you're trying to hammer out guidelines for this uh, very important meeting, it's hoped that Durban will set a new tone post Kyoto and there's a lot of nervousness or post Copenhagen and there's a lot of nervousness that this is around the time when the Kyoto Protocol expires yeah. but there isn't some kind of international binding document to guide all countries as to how to pursue a green agenda. How much attention has been given to the legalities? Well, legality is, is the spirit of Kyoto which, uh, which sets specific punishable uh, you know, uh, goals, it doesn't seem likely that will happen post Durban. But we are moving closer together as the international community. Mm -hmm. One understands that those countries who pollute, who are the worst polluters in the world, cannot change overnight. Yeah. They have to be given some kind of time to, um, to adjust. Yeah. And therefore, we need a green energy fund. Yeah to support developing countries who are on the receiving end of, right. of the processes. So I think what we, we would like to see at Durban as African ministers, sub-Saharan African ministers especially, would be the, the, the setting up of a robust, uh, dependable, predictable fund uh, up to, you know, 100 billion Mm -hmm. a, a, a year in about... And how would that be financed? Because obviously we've heard a lot about a proposed Green Fund. I know that our Minister of National Planning sits on a committee that's mm -hmm. looking at how to establish an international institution that would manage a Green Fund. Well, it would come from uh, the uh, CDM uh, process mainly, but from other sources as well, from, from states if need be, which, which are the ones that I've just referred to, the ones that are the, mm -hmm. the worst culprits, so to speak, the, the worst polluters, they right. should be able to see the, the value of the rest of us not following in their footsteps, yeah. but rather leapfrogging from, you know, having learned from the, their uh, bad lessons of the past, yeah. uh, going, you know, ch changing the, the paradigm and the development right. going forward. Let's talk about the African position, and maybe you could give us an example coming out of Lesotho. One of the common arguments we've heard in recent times is Africa's just embarked on a steady growth path. Mm -hmm. Africa is now firmly in a position to begin a concerted industrialization program mm -hmm. and we shouldn't have to be penalized. Africa shouldn't have to subscribe to international quotas on energy management, CO2 emission management. We should be allowed to pollute so that we get to a higher level of industrialization. Is that still very much the sentiment? Th there, are, there are two concepts here. The one is mitigation of all possible uh, negative impacts. The other one is if we cannot mitigate, in which case, you know, the, what you have just mentioned uh, would, would be the case in point, that we cannot be asked to not pollute uh, or to not face pollution. And we are the worst sufferers mm. when, when that happens. 
then we should be given the means uh, of, of uh, you know, making sure that we, we minimize the effects. So that, that's the way forward. Lesotho, mm -hmm. some would say it's a relatively small country. What do you have to offer to a climate change debate? Well, our pollution would be negligible, <laughs> but our contribution, you know, potential contribution to green energy supply to the sub-region, South Africa, ourselves, our neighbors beyond Namibia, Botswana, Swaziland, and, and, and even beyond Zimbabwe and so on, would be in, in terms of hydropower contributions. We are sitting on a local a gold mine, mm -hmm. uh, potentially, just in the phase two of the Lesotho Highlands Water Project, there is a component of over a thousand megawatts that we would share with our neighbors, especially South Africa, um, as part of our contribution. But in terms of other renewable energy, wind energy, for example, because of our wind regime in Lesotho, we being higher than South Africa yeah. topographically, is in the order of magnitude of some 6,000 megawatts, which obviously we cannot all mm -hmm. uh, consume by ourselves. We would share that with, with our, our, our neighbors, and then there would be straight hydro and uh, pump storage hydro uh, regimes as well, which would uh, contribute upwards of right. a total of 10,000 megawatts to the, to the sub-region. Given your natural endowments, obviously there's a lot to tap into in terms of alternative correct, yes. sources of mm -hmm. energy. Mm -hmm. What's the environment like for investments in that space? Well, we are making it as, as friendly as possible to investors and we, 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 we don't play as, a, as the state. We, we just level the playing field. We always keep our own state participation to the minimum 10%. 15%, we don't go beyond 25% mm -hmm. as the state of Lesotho, so that, and, and we make, uh, we, we build an enabling environment for investors, and they are coming thick and fast now. They are. Okay, what's the response been from your counterparts in SADC countries? South Africa does have an energy security issue. The reason why at the moment the lights are on is simply because the economy is not growing at optimum capacity. In the event of a global economic recovery, industrial needs for this country mean that the pressures on ESCOM's grid are going to be tremendous. Yeah. As we look to a future of recovery, what sort of measures can we take in partnership with Lesotho? Well, my counterpart, Honorable Dipua Peters and I, are in the throes. We are just about to sign a big energy cooperation agreement between the two countries. And it, it involves, you know, pump storage and hydropower take long to build, mm. five years and even more. But the wind farms uh, electricity, because of, the, of their nature and the technology used, take much shorter to build and you know starting next year we, 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 we are just about to embark on a program of a phased wind farm electricity supply program mm -hmm. that would supply uh, a lot of the, uh, the um, economic recovery programs in South Africa and the rest of the region. For business, obviously, uh, if you mentioned Deboer Peters, and she's very keen that business also plays its part mm -hmm. in uh, carbon capture and all sorts mm -hmm. of other areas. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing increased efforts at co-generation agreements where uh, big industrial plants use their various um, mechanisms to try to feed back into the national Correct, grid. Yes. How much of that sort of work are you doing in Lesotho? Well, we are, we are talking with a lot of them already, uh, right uh, across the border, into South Africa, into other countries, Botswana and so on, uh, to make sure that we collaborate uh, in a mutually beneficial way, uh, because they do have, you know, when, when, when you have a potential to export those kinds of amounts of electricity, it's in your best interest to talk directly to industry as mm -hmm. well because they are the potential off-takers of mm -hmm. the power that you produce. And finally, affordability, because people will say, you know, um, you talk a good talk, but ultimately, when investors invest in wind energy and others, they must be able to recover those investments. And so, 
other very sort of sketchy issues is the pricing of electricity. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly in, in Southern Africa, as consumers were starting to pay a lot more because historically electricity was subsidized, that's definitely changing. Um, what's the situation like in Lesotho? We have to talk at governmental level, at uh, uh, regulators level, as well as across the, the, the table with the future generators because uh, those are issues that have to be discussed by the people uh, who are best suited to do it. Okay, I thank you. the prices and so I on. thank you so much for your time. Thank Minister you. of Natural Resources for Lesotho, Munyani Muleleki.